Now today I'll be showing how to test and replace a rear oxygen sensor on a Subaru. Now there are two ways you could test this sensor. Let me first remove it from the vehicle, show you the first technique, and then we'll jump back into the car for the second technique. Now this is a 2011 Outback with 173,000 miles, the very popular 2.5 liter boxer engine. They use this on the Impreza, the Outback, many, many, many models. Getting access to the sensor is very simple. You don't have to jack up the vehicle. You can, but you really don't have to. So underneath this dam, going to the air filter, we'll find the sensor. So let's start by removing this, and then I'll show you on how you can remove it. Now on your Subaru, you may have these plastic tabs where you simply just insert a flathead and just pull out the plastic tab. Very simple. On, in this case, sort of just generic plastic tabs that you can just pull up on. Okay. Now once you remove that plastic cover, you'll find this air fuel sensor. This we tested and replaced a few days ago. And then you have this guy right here. This is the sensor we're dealing with today. Now, if you're curious on the difference, this is before the cat. Right here is your catalytic converter. So this is known as bank one sensor one air fuel sensor. This guy is bank one sensor two. Okay, this is after the catalytic converter. Now, I'll start by removing the sensor. You can test the sensor while it's still attached to the vehicle. I'm going to remove it because it's just a lot easier to film. But again, everything that you'll see on the bench, you could do while the sensor is still attached to the, to the exhaust. Now, looking at the harness connector, at the 12 o'clock position, there's a tab. You will press down on this tab right here with one hand, and then with the other hand, pull on the body. Don't pull from the wiring, pull on the body and remove the harness connect. Now, of course, I did this off camera so I can hold uh, the camera in place just to show you how to do this. Now, the other thing you also want to check is the connector itself. If there's any water in here, you will have a trouble code for the oxygen sensor. So make sure everything is nice and dry. Take a look at the wiring too. If you see any cuts, obviously there's your problem. But in this case, everything looks okay. Now this is an oxygen sensor removal tool. This is only $9 off Amazon. I'll have a link in the description box below if you do need one of these. The key thing is to make sure you purchase the right drive. So in my case, I'm using a half inch drive ratchet. But if you only have a 3 inch drive, you can purchase this tool in a 3 inch drive adapter. So just make sure you purchase the right tool or the right adapter for the tools that you will be using. Now it's a little dark in here, I apologize for the lighting, but let's just place, all that you're doing is taking the socket and place it over, right there, and then let me grab the ratchet, let me just show you also very quickly what it looks like, okay? So now I have the ratchet on the extension, the other thing I did is right here where the sensor meets the exhaust, I sprayed some PB Blaster and just let it soak for a few minutes. Now the reason why I like to use a half inch drive is because of the long handle. These can be really, really tough to remove. In fact, I'm going to use a little extension to give me some more leverage. And this is what I mean. This is just a 22 millimeter socket with a small extension and I'll place it over the end of the ratchet. Okay, so now I have a little bit of a longer handle to really pry this off. Okay, so here we go. These can be really, really tight, like I said. There we go. Use the PB Blaster, it does make, a, does make a difference. And I'm just going to remove this from the exhaust. So as you can see, that ratchet is removed and I kept the socket on the oxygen sensor because it's very easy just to grab and remove from the exhaust. Okay, now testing the sensor is very easy. There are two ways to go about this. Again, this is the cheaper option. This is using a digital multimeter. This is $20 off Amazon. I'll have links again in the descri description box below if you need any of these tools. Flip side, local auto parts store, home centers, they all sell them. Now, take a look at the multimeter, a lot of different options. In our case, we're doing an ohms or a resistance test. So that's the omega symbol on the tool. Just place it to the uh, ohms setting, and this is ready to go. 
that's it you're done every multimeter they have two leads a red lead and a black lead so just plug in the leads and then take a look let me place this over here take a look at the oxygen sensor and you'll find a notch at the 12 o'clock position so in other words right here there's nothing on the body two parallel lines two parallel lines and then on top you'll find a notch make sure the notch is pointing up at the 12 o'clock position and then all that we're doing is we're taking the probes from the multimeter these two probes one probe will touch prong number one the other one will touch prong number two and we should see a reading now to make this easier I'm using alligator clips just makes it a lot easier to do this freeze up your hands and let me just get everything in the screen here a good sensor on average five to six ohms is perfectly fine just watch the meter again and we have we have eight ohms worth of resistance that's perfectly fine now if you do this test and you're not getting a reading or the reading is very very high typically if it's over 50 ohms it's not concrete but for the most part if you're over 50 ohms the sensor is no good and it needs to be replaced now my in my situation this sensor is perfectly fine but this vehicle really needs a catalytic converter and when you replace a catalytic converter it's always a good idea to replace the oxygen and the air fuel sensor so I have the new sensors here so the next video I'll be doing is replacing this catalytic converter but that being said very easy to test I'll show you the other option using a scan tool now if you do need one of these uh, go with a good a good name I like Denso they make very good high quality parts in terms of pricing check out uh, I'm not being paid to say this but uh, Rock Auto uh, they have excellent prices very 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 good prices now when you reinstall the sensor there's no need to over tighten anything just make it nice and snug maybe one more whoops sorry about that okay and then when you plug in the oxygen sensor make sure you hear it click you want to make sure it's nice and tight like that okay now the other option and really more modern way is taking a look at the sensor using a scan tool now these are around seventy dollars for a good scan tool they were lower in the past but I think due to COVID and more people working on their cars and they see more volume, I, my personal feeling is that they bumped up the prices. So if you can find a really good price, fantastic. But again, a good one around 70 bucks or your local auto parts store may do this for, for free if you buy the parts from them. So again, we want data stream or live data. And what we need to find is this specific sensor, oxygen sensor for a bank one sensor two. And this is really a must have. If you do plan on working, maintaining your own vehicle, an absolute must. It's well worth the investment. You can do so many things with a scan tool. But right here, oxygen sensor output voltage bank one sensor two. That's what we want. And let's see what the, uh, what the data says. So this is a good reading. Take a look at this voltage. Now, if you see anything under 0 0.03 volts, or above 1.2 volts, then the sensor is bad. And that will help pretty much 90% of you. There's other things you could do with, with the scan tool to really pinpoint it, but for the most part, if you're under 0 0.03 or above 1.2, the sensor needs to be replaced. But again, if everything looks okay, check the exhaust, check the harness connector, make sure you have good connections, and make sure that the wiring is good. But for the most part, it's easy enough very very quick so the next thing for this Subaru will be a catalytic converter if you want to see that uh, please subscribe ring that bell and we'll see you soon